the Secret Origins Podcast, Episode 12. And welcome to episode 12 of the Secret Origins Podcast. I'm your host, DFG and Mike, and joining me is Lupus Convoy, who, for some strange reason, he has flies attacking his roommates. It's a funny little thing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Today we will be giving our final thoughts on season two of Justice League. Um... I, I mean, I know that eventually, once we get down to episode 25, it's going to be like a, fi- a big final thing on the whole series. But, honestly, I actually prefer the seasons 3, 4, and 5 more than seasons 1 and 2. Mm. Uh, I, I like several episodes from both seasons 1 and season 2. I actually like a lot of episodes in in season 2. But, I don't know, I think the... The whole story arc thing, and it's like... I, I didn't really catch season one and season two when they were airing on Cartoon Network, but it, it it's kind of like when Transformers did the five-parter uh, face, Five Faces of Darkness. Uh, well, it's... Well, no, I, I'm trying to think, is there... I was trying to think of a show that used to do, like, five, like four and five-parters that was weekly and not daily, because Transformers was daily. But, you know, it's like, oh... Part one. Wait, no, cliffhanger. Holy crap, I have to wait a week to watch part two? But, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I need to also bring up before we get into most of the recapping of season two that uh, this will be the very last episode that you will see the uh, Secret Origins uh, original seven artwork that Stephen C. Phillips has done for us. Uh, because as of episode 13, we are going unlimited, so there will be a new... Um, a standard for artwork as far as that uh, even though a couple episodes I think I think three episodes I'm gonna be doing um, special art for for, for uh, th- this uh, this first two years of Justice League I know I did one in episode five with uh, Batman and Superman hugging um, <laughs> and I did one for um, uh, last episode, episode uh, well, actually, the last two episodes, episodes ten and eleven. Episode ten has the Joker TV lo- look from when he was holding the TV tape in uh, Wild Cards, and it's like twenty million Jokers on the, on the TV screens. Um, and then this episode, I can't decide. I'm torn between that GL image that you had mentioned of him coming out of the shadows with the with his eyes glowing. I've got that as art. It's either going to be that, or it's going to be, um, um, oh yeah, I, I grabbed one where, where Batman is scowling at Flash for the, that's not helping bit. Helping. <laughs> uh, and that'll be the, the, this past, uh, two weeks ago, that'll be the episode art for episode 11, so, um, but for this one, for episode 12, we're just going to have the standard, regular Secret Origins podcast art with the, uh, Red circle around the uh, seven members. So, peace. Um, so, why don't we start with favorite episodes? What are some of your favorite episodes from season two, sir? Oh, um, a better world, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to see the, the the dichotomy of what could have happened and what really uh, you could say this really sets up for the next two seasons, three seasons. Yep. Um, the whole Ju- Justice League. Unlimited story arc. Um, only a dream, just to see. Um, 
you know how how strong willed Batman is and how he's the one person that repeatedly is the one with no superpowers but he is the one that can save the day at the end I can agree with you on that part as far as that episode goes as far as Batman's resiliency but other than that really yeah I mean that's only a dream I mean that is such it's a- not eclipsed <laughs> okay, it's not as bad as that, and it's not as bad as that. W- that's what shall not be named from season one. But still, it's such a th- a throwaway episode. It's such a throwaway story. I, I, I you know, I, I you it, know, I will that say though, stuff that it does aside. give a little uh, credence to what we were talking about on the last episode about not being able to get into Hot Girl's mind. Right, exactly. So it does have some sort of continuity with it, but it's still. I just don't like that episode. <laughs> even 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 with Batman, you know, going into the copy shop. Give me a triple. A triple. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole what is that song you're singing? Oh, it, it it's keeping you out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Very and, shaka. Yeah, and it's like, you know, that stuff was awesome, but that episode that two parter in general, I probably will never watch that again. Ever. It's something that I put in the background, but Yeah, yeah. Um what other ones did you like? Uh Wild Cards. Love Wild Cards. That was definitely one of the, the ones that are right up there because it it just shows how insane some of the characters are, especially the Joker. But we, it's the last time we're ever gonna see anyone from the Batman continuity. Well, yeah, I, I guess, but that's... Yeah, you're right. That is the last appearance of the Joker until uh, the flashback and... Well, see, that's the thing, though. Hey, oh, wait. You still haven't seen Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, have you? Not yet. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Your, your job, before we start Unlimited, and w- whenever we're going to start that, in a couple weeks, your job between then and now... Forget your 175 million math problems. Go to Best Buy, get Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, the uncut version, and watch that. By the time we record episode 13, you better have watched that film. <laughs> I will come up there. I have your address. <laughs> oh, what else do we got? Um, <laughs> changing the subject. <laughs> um, I was really big on comfort and joy for some reason. Like, it really showed what they could do with one episode. Yeah, I know, and it's kind of a setup for Unlimited, but still, they... And I know that we needed that 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 kind of a, a break in action and more of just a, a very slow episode between that, between Wild Cards and Starcrossed. I get that, but I don't know. I just... I, I, that, no, that one never really, really hit with me that much. I don't know. Call me a Grinch. I don't know. It, it, and it's not even the fact that it's a Christmas episode. It, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that they broke their own style as far as the two-part stories, which, you know, fine, whatever. You're going to, you know, mix something in there. That's fine. Um, which, but if you're going to do a holiday episode, can you really split it into two, two well, parts? Well, no, you can't. That's that, That's the problem, though. No, you can't. But but still, I I don't know. I, Plus, I, I get to see the ultra humanite <laughs> again for the yes. Yeah. But we also got to see the development of the relationship between GL and Hawkgirl, which makes yeah, uh, which then starts just to shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it does make it does make that the last three episodes Starcrossed, which is in a league of its own, honestly. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, that's those are my my favorite ones. I mean, that's majority of the season, I suppose. Yeah, I liked. Uh, we've already talked about a better world, uh, and we've already talked about wild cards. Uh, we can touch on Star Cross in a little bit, but the the three that I really liked the most, the three two parters, was Twilight, the season opener, because that just you know, season one they ended on Savage Time, which was right. kind of. It, it was awesome, but just the way they ended it where, oh, okay, it's just kind of like, it wasn't like a super epic ending like Starcrossed is, but it was still good. But opening the season with Twilight and having Darkseid back and having the, the big superman Dark Side fight again and just kicking all kinds of ass, that was just an awesome, awesome season opener. Um, 
Tabula Rasa. One of the reasons why I like that one is because um, just of the of the more characterization of Lex that we see. Um, and we'll see that again in a better world as far as him maybe at the end saying, oh, maybe I'll run for president, which comes mm-hmm. back in, 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 in Unlimited. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed watching those, and those are episodes, Twilight and Tabula Rasa, those are episodes along with Better World. Here, Oh, I'll mention the other one in a second. Uh, along with Better World, Filed Cards, and Starcross that I could watch anytime. Um, Hereafter was just awesome. Hereafter was, even though it was a, it wasn't a direct um, adaptation of the of the death of Superman. It was a nice way to do it in Justice League style, I thought. And technically, he wasn't really dead. But I mean, still, you know, when you when you end that first part of Hereafter, you think he's gone. He's gone. You know, the whole funeral bit, and then of course at the end of that two parter, I believe they. They cut to the barren world and show him lying there with his eyes closed. But, I mean, still, even if you didn't have that, even if you didn't have that little hint of, oh, here's Superman, you know, um, still a very powerful episode. Now, I have never, I, I never got, I at the time, remind me, when did Death of Superman happen? Oh. What um, year? Find out. It was, I was a kid then. Uh, yeah, so was I. See, that's the thing. I've never actually read that comic book. The black version, really, the 75th, really? yeah, the, yeah, the seventy-fifth anniversary thing. I've never read it. I've never owned it. I've never even seen it. I mean, I've seen the cover for it and stuff, but I never, I've never had it. Nineteen ninety-two. Ninety-two. So I was twelve years old then. So um, uh, yeah. yeah it's Superman Volume Two, Number Seventy-Five, was uh, January nineteen ninety-three. Okay. But it started. Started in October of 1992. Yeah. See, so, yeah, basically, what I'm talking about is, you know, I, I I've seen specials about it on TV. Uh, basically, the 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 the, bl- the big black book is basically what it was. Um, now I know people have told me that there is uh, Death and Return of Superman, where it's both those stories mixed, not mixed together, but put together into one trade paperback. I'd love to get that. Unfortunately, it probably costs an arm and a leg. I wouldn't imagine so. I, I don't know. It's pretty yeah. powerful stuff back then. Uh, yeah, but but, um, but uh, unfortunately, that was the comic that everybody was trying to clamor for. Yeah, exactly. Um, so there, there was a ton of printings of it. So you could get the individual things. Yeah. Um, fairly cheap. I remember my um, my stepdad was very much in the oh my god this is going to be worth a lot you're going to get every single issue and and covet them and bag them and board them and they're not worth that much <laughs> it's like the obama uh, obama issue of spider-man where everyone went out to go get that cuz it was the big you know oh my god this is going to be worth so much that the the market was satiated with them wait 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 they did an obama Yes, issue they did. Spider Obama Man. Spider-Man episode. Oh my issue. fucking god! And it's it. It was one of those all those people that actually were reader readers of uh, Spider-Man. They couldn't get an issue because everyone went out to go grab it. So I don't all the issues were sold I don't out. Think and Jerry just, Seinfeld showing up in a Superman short or something, but putting a fucking President Obama in Spider-Man. Oh my god. Why would you put Jerry Seinfeld in there? I mean, not in Spider Man. I said I, I don't mind uh, Jerry in uh, in, a, in a Superman bit because Jerry's a Superman nut. He did those American Express commercials a while back with the animated yeah. Superman. Yeah, but no, I, I don't mind crap like that. But putting the president in in comic uh, the real life president in comic books, I don't like that at all. No, no. This kind of date the characters too. I mean, well, yeah. Uh, let's see, and, you know, just the exclamation point on this season, and they've pretty much set it up from Twilight uh, to Starcrossed about Hot Girl's whole whole backstory and stuff. You know, she lied to John, or Jean, when she said, uh, you know, I'm, I was a cop and blah, 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 and all this and all that stuff. She's been spying on them for five years, and that's just yikes. Definitely makes you sit there and realize why people didn't want her back. 
Well, you know, I I actually prefer her in Unlimited. Uh, she does have a lot of good qualities in Unlimited, I, I think, um, especially the story that they took with her and GL, um, which even though GL is currently dating somebody else, but Vixen. God, I like Vixen. <laughs> I like her too, but still, it's it's supposed. Yeah, to I like her more in the comics. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I, I pretty much wrote down all, all the favorites we just talked about with the exception of some of the ones you talked about because I pretty much said every everything else, episodes that can die in a fire, almost everything else, other than, <laughs> other than the good ones. <laughs> Eclipsed. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we got to talk about Eclipse before we move on. I know we just finished talking about Stark. Eclipsed. Oh, my God. Um, one of the forumites on over at PredaconEmpire.com slash Nexus, Godspeed, which I believe he's also a member on TFW. Um, he wrote in the episode 10 thread, which he was supposed to write in the episode 9 thread, about um, um, the, the the ones that had Eclipsed in it. The episode 9 had Eclipsed in it. He's like, I don't know why you guys are hating on Eclipsed. I, you know, that, that is a good episode. No, dude, that's not a good episode. That's not a good episode at all. <laughs> You can think that. I mean, everyone's got different tastes. Well, true, but, I mean, (laughs) Eclipsed. The only good thing about Eclipsed was the fact that Bob the Goon was a voice in it, but even that is kind of shaky at best. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of of Eclipse, though. I think he's just a very lame character. Yeah. That's my personal belief. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um... The special features, e- e- even before they released the the complete series set and basically combined all the season sets, discs with it, and they added one additional disc, the, the bonus features on these things are awesome. You've got uh, three commentaries by Bruce Tim and company. Uh, Bruce Tim, James Tucker, Dwayne McDuffie, Paul Dini, uh, just all those guys. Um uh, and, and a couple of the directors, I believe Dan Reba was one of the directors, and he was on one of the commentaries, and also Joaquin Santos, I believe is his name. Uh, so we have commentaries on Twilight Part 2, A Better World Part 2, and Starcrossed Part 3. Um, we have an advertisement or a, or a clip of the Look Up in the Sky Superman DVD that came out when uh, they, re- they released the uh, Superman ultimate DVD set when Superman uh, Returns was just going out of theaters. Uh, and then you've got the two special, the actual special features themselves. you got Voices of Justice and Justice League Declassified. Awesome features, which Lupus never watched. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Voices of Justice is Phil Lamar, Jennifer Hale, Susan Eisenberg, Maria Canales... Andrea Romano, George Newbern, and I think somebody else. I don't. I, th- that might be all of them, but I'm not sure. Uh, and they're talking about voicing these superheroes and what kind of voice do you put with them. And um, it's just a very, very interesting special feature. Uh, and then Justice League Declassified is the same thing that we've seen on all the other DC Animated Universe DVDs as far as Jason Hillhouse hosting Bruce Tim, Paul Dini, um, I think James Tucker and might be Stan Berkowitz or Alan Burnett. I'm not sure which one. It's one of those two. Um, it m- might have even have been Glenn, Glenn Murakami. I'll have to go back and watch it. It's been a while since I've watched It's been about a week or so since I watched it. Um and that basically talks about, you know, you know, the the transition from season one to season two, and what do you do differently? How do you do it better? And they fully admit that in season one, they made Superman a wimp. So Superman wasn't going to be wimpy in season two anymore. Um, and that's just an awesome feature as well. Um, if this was the end of the Justice League cartoon, because they said they weren't sure if they were going to get picked up for more. And then Cartoon Network said, yeah, sure, you guys can do more. But if this was the end and we wouldn't be covering any more episodes, wow, did they end this one with a bang. Yeah, they did. Because you got the Watchtower blown up. It's gone. Hot Girl is kicked out of the league. They don't know if they're moving on or if they're rebuilding or whatever, or if they're just dissipating. And oh, my God, just awesome. 
They got, even if they were to uh, rebuild, it's a lot to rebuild. <laughs> I mean, not just uh, putting another line item into the R&D budget, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, how, who do they bring in? Do they bring in Aquaman? Do they bring in, you know, other characters? Mm-hmm. They're not the only superheroes out there. No, they're not. No, they're not. But but John and, and Flash both say, do we rebuild and, and where do we start? Um, at the end of that. And they just kind of leave you hanging until Unlimited. And wow, I'm not really trying to give away the next episodes as far as, um, as, far as my... Uh, opinions of them, but damn, they kind of really just went all out with Initiation, the first episode of the third season, and you know, people always call it Justice League for seasons one and two, and Justice League Unlimited for seasons three through five, I am just, just because it's easier for me, I consider the entire cartoon Justice League. Yes, I understand that it's called Justice League Unlimited, and we will be calling it that for a while. But on an overall scope, the way that we are doing this podcast, we are doing season by season. We're not doing Series 1, which was Season 1 and 2, and then Series 2, which is Seasons 3 through 5. Also, in Season 3 and 4, Bruce Timm has said that that that, that, that whole season of Justice League Unlimited was uh, meant to be an anthology. And... Um, if you get the single disc Justice League Unlimited Season 1 DVD or not single disc but single season set uh, it does say that it's Justice League Unlimited Season 1 and it's 26 episodes technically that's Season 3 and 4 put together it's Year 3 and Year 4 put together into 26 episodes so the way we're going to do it is the way we've done it so far we're going to do all the episodes in Season 3, we are going to end on Once and Future Thing Part 1 and 2, and then we're going to do a recap for Season 3, and then go into Season 4, and so on and so forth. So that's how we're breaking it down, just because I like breaking it down that way. Um, but Season 2 overall, just great. It, it was just awesome. They pretty much blew everything out of the water, quite literally. <laughs> really set up the Kobe Desert. Yeah, true. Talk about ringing the bell. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, what what else? bat was in the belfry? <laughs> mm, yeah, all the bats in the belfry. <laughs> uh, what else do you want to say about season two? Um, it really shows what they were capable of doing with the story, and how they they were they went from season one where they were getting their their feeling. Season two, you'd really see they're they're blowing things out and they're pushing it as to how far they can go and they know what they can do story wise as they've done with Starcrossed and from there on we're not going to see just one little little bit of information when we hit the next season it's going to be every episode is vital to figure out what's going to happen at the end. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, th- there are some that are kind of throwaways, at least in my opinion, but we'll get to that once we get to it. Um, I think uh, I think that's about it. So we are going to play you guys the uh, unlimited, or not unlimited, but um, the special features that Lupus never watched. Uh, first up will be jo- uh, Voices of Justice, and then it'll be uh, Justice League Declassified. Uh, hopefully, Lupus will go back and watch those, and he still needs to go out and get Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, the uncut version. Uh, so yeah, Lupus has tons of homework for podcasting. When don't I have a ton of homework? Well, that's, school doesn't count in my book. It's podcasting homework you have now. <laughs> so, after the special features, we will come back with the outro. <laughs> We're here with the cast and crew of Justice League. Um, Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Jennifer Hale. I play Giganta and Killer Frost. My name is George Newbern, and I play Superman. I'm Maria Canals, and I play Hawk Girl. I'm Phil Lamar, and I do the voice of Green Lantern. Hi, I'm Susan Eisenberg, and I do the voice of Wonder Woman. I'm Andrea Romano, and I'm the casting and voice director. One question that 
I get asked a lot, and probably you guys do, is like, what do you like about voice acting versus on camera acting? It's less ego, less ego, less stress. That's my experience with it yeah. too. Is that there is less ego with the actors. It's not about if you're tall enough yeah. or blonde enough or skinny enough. It's really about whether you can act the role and if you can have the fun doing it. It seems that the actors are more free to just enjoy and play. And it's a mm -hmm. challenge to make everything happen with just your voice. You know, they can't see my face. Uh, I don't have anything else around me to help me. There's no set, and it's like I want to make that little nuance come out in my voice. It's exciting. It's a, it's a challenge. I, I love it. No, I said rotate the securing bolt counterclockwise, not clockwise. That's what I did. Oh, no, you didn't. Now, I, I don't know. It seems in my experience, because we have a lot of guest stars on the show, and you'd know this best, Andrea, but it seems like people with singing backgrounds or stage backgrounds are the ones who adapt most quickly to doing voice Absolutely. acting. Mm -hmm. It has to do with, I think, the, the energy involved in stage acting, too. It's because voiceover acting is, is subtle, but it's not as subtle as on-camera TV or on-camera film is. It's uh, a little bit broader, and so stage actors seem to have the presence that is mm -hmm. required for it. And um, singers, too, you're right. They have the mic technique already, obviously. That's part of it. And then that seems to translate well into the uh, voiceover field. Mm. Because this time, I won't stop until you're just a greasy smear on my fist. Let's go. As actors, do you treat a superhero differently from another character? You remind me all the time yeah. that she's a warrior. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. I'm a warrior. Yeah. And the body language, like our body language when we're behind the mics. I mean, I know with Wonder Woman, she's very regal. I mean, I remember that from the audition. You know, there's just something, she's had a certain background and she's been raised a certain way. Bonsoir, Wonder Woman. Bonsoir, monsieur. I'm not slumped behind a microphone. I mean, that I always, even though I'm sitting, I am always sitting up straight. There's just a sense of who she is physically mm -hmm. that I think we all are conscious of when we're doing mm -hmm. it. Then I guess you'll have to feed me. Don't be afraid, little man. I won't bite. The next question is, how did you decide on your voice for the, for the characters? And for me, w seeing these guys with gigantic chests just made me think, well, well he's got to have this, you know, enormous voice for this enormous chest. <laughs> 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 yeah. Whose side are you really on? Don't you know? Well, you know, it's funny to think about that. Like, Giganta, she's huge, but she's all girl. I mean, she'll kick your butt, but she's, it's, her power comes from her, like, girl thing, <laughs> you know, and she's a warrior, but, you know, her bad comes from that, Every, uh, everything comes out of that, it's that dress. It's <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't hit a girl, would you? I would. I, I started out sort of at one level, they used to pitch me down, and I think as I, as I <clears throat> sort of got older during the series, <laughs> my voice got a little lower and I had to, didn't have to reach for the, for the, for the, for the low part, but, but, but I definitely had to really focus on Superman, because you're right, he's drawn so gigantic. You see his bone structure when he gets electrocuted a lot, which is, which is all the time. I'm sitting, there, I'm sitting there looking at his vertebra going, God, that's like the vertebra of an elephant. <laughs> he's huge. Any minute now, Brainiac will explode. And guess what? You're going with him. Is there a different energy when we have a special guest star? Because we have a lot of really cool guest stars. And do you guys feel like there's a different energy in the room? Mm, yeah, yeah. Very much. Yeah. It's very exciting for me because I get to bring in actors that I admire. That's more like it. But I'll bet you folks at home are wondering who these wild cards are. Though it pains me to admit it, I need your help. My word is absolute and must be accepted by all. Ain't this great? The whole team together again, all eight of us. I have to look at it as who's going to come in and have fun with us and yes. enjoy this process and not be freaked out by the fact that they've never right. had to work without the benefit of their physical uh, uh, you know, being. Right. Yeah. It's really right. about being able to translate to voice. It's well, I remember fun. one episode, and I'm trying to remember who all was here, but it was just like everybody was speaking in like bass tones. There was Clancy Brown oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and I think Powers Booth mm -hmm. and Carl was here and oh, Kevin right. Conroy was yep. was here and in the you, studio. As, uh, yes, and you too. And yeah, I was doing yes. my low voice. Yes. And uh, and I think Powers Booth it was like yes, everyone was just like, Well, what do you think? Yes. I don't think this <laughs> <laughs> To the point, yeah, you weren't even listening, you were just feeling it through the floor. It's right. like, oh, was that a good take? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything I took was freely offered. Maybe you should take better care of your stuff. What are the advantages 
of recording as a group versus individually. It's far better when the group is together. I think everybody does feed off of each other's energy. Yeah. And I think that it's important for you two to hear what happened in the scene before. The, even if you're not in it, how sure. your scene is then going to follow and what's going to make sense. Take 157. I was bad cop. You're always bad cop. Why play against type? Anyway, we got a name out of her. That's another thing that bothers me. Aquaman and Dr. Fate. Fate's some sort of mystic, isn't he? That's right. And only magic could have hurt me like this. I guess I'm off the fence. Somebody asked, what are recording sessions typically like? And, I don't know, I'd say they're pretty much like this, only Just with great big microphones uh, in front of Are we allowed faces. to actually say? <laughs> Mayhem. <laughs> 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 there, it's a little bit like um, being a teacher in an elementary school class. You know, I, I find sometimes, that sometimes. Sure. The really silly part is the rehearsal, because we rehearse the same day that we record. And so you have about a 40-minute rehearsal where you go through, I read the stage directions that, that are important to you guys to know as far as how it will affect your lines being read. And then um, that's when the silly stuff really happens. That's where everybody sort of gets out mm -hmm. all the silly ad libs right. and the will, right. you know wild things that they do right. and then when we get to the actual record then it's a little bit more down to business and let's get it done because we have a finite time to get this done in and so then it gets a little bit more down to business but the more fun thing to watch is in right. fact the rehearsal right. what's the plan plan we blow that thing out of the sky and another big part of the the recording is the action scenes we do a lot of it in adr but we also do it live with I mean, a show like this has a lot of action. Mm -hmm. um, guys, give us your thoughts on the, the action scenes and the grunts. I think that is a whole separate day of, of animation. It's so physical. It's so much fun. Mm -hmm. it, is, well, it has become one of my favorite things. You didn't seem comfortable no. doing the, no. the action scenes. Uh, no, but I now you're great at it. What <laughs> changed? I just got comfortable with it. It's like I let go of the inhibitions of it, of looking silly, of being concerned, and just having fun, of just of really feeling the punch, of really throwing the punch. I love, and I'm yeah. now I, it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> oh, crap. One more. <laughs> Specificity is so key in it. Like when someone says, okay, you get hit, well, where am I hit? In the face, in the gut, in the arm, in the mm -hmm. leg? What am I hit? Am I shot? Am I punched? Am I stabbed? Am I kicked? What is it? Well, if you're George, and it's uh, it's everything. Right. It's everything. Yeah. It's Electricity it's everything. is his special thing. Uh, yeah, I just got my head crushed by gigantic feet. What would that feel like? It's an extra. <laughs> it's an extra. Your imagination has to yeah, be. You know, you to I would never it. survive that crush. So what would that what would that sound like? All right. Now I say to you, discuss Walla. <laughs> we can't use four words if we discuss Walla. <laughs> Everybody discuss Walla in three, two... Run! Bruce, just give us a little... Get out of my way! This is the big old ball's gonna hit us! Ah! Let's talk about what Walla really is Let's so that dress. everybody understands yeah. what right. it is. It really encompasses a large group of things. It may be a crowd scene in a stadium where everybody is just basically talking. It's the sound that you would hear if you walked into a sports stadium and what do you hear? You hear all the crowd talking about whatever. People joke sometimes that when they do Walla, they actually say the word Walla, 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 Walla. That really doesn't work. And so sometimes we'll have to say, here's what the words are that you might be saying in this. And it's also, we get very silly during it. I mean, yes. it's that one time where we really just... <laughs> cut loose. Yeah, we do, because it's the whole group, and you bring people in, and you bring some of the writers, and, you know, Bruce will come in, and, right. you know, and, and then it's like, really, we're just yeah, playing. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's all fun. And if we can't have fun making cartoons, for goodness sakes, <laughs> we're just exactly. in the wrong business. Yeah. Yeah, so... Pretty bad odds. Yeah, they don't stand a chance. What do you guys like best about working on Justice League? I like the cast. Yeah. Good group. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's like a great feeling group. when you hear Andrea say, excellent, and you look up and you see Bruce smiling. Plus <laughs> being part of a show that has such history, you know, being... Yeah. being Iconic character. Uh, yeah. Being Absolutely. Superman, being Hawk Girl, being Wonder Woman. The way popular culture is now, you know, there's so much ambiguity and the bad guys are good and the good guys are bad and this is one of the last places in pop culture where good really is cool. That's a wrap. Just about. You like it, Bruce? Good. That yes. is a wrap. Oh. Really nice, you guys. You didn't think I'd come here without reinforcements, did you? Wish I'd thought of that. Oh, wait. I did.
everybody. I'm Jason Hillhouse, and we're here to talk about season two of the Justice League with Butch Lukic, director, James Tucker, producer, Bruce Tim, producer, Dwayne McDuffie, story editor. What were some of the things that you learned from season one that then applied to season two that you think maybe smoothed out a little bit? Well, you know, the, the thing was, with season one is that it felt it was a decent show, but it was very safe. It was very middle of the road. It, it, it didn't really surprise you very much. We were deliberately trying not to make the show as dark as we had done with Batman and Batman Beyond and even the Superman show to a degree. We were trying to make a little bit more of an all-ages show. It's juggling a lot of characters and, and the archetypes that are real strong, but the personalities have a tendency to blend into one another. Well, I'm trying to get Superman out of the way when there's stories dealing that too. with Batman or Wonder Woman. Right, right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Superman could deal with pretty much everything. You didn't want to bring in Kryptonite all the time because that was right. just an easy hook, so... I mean, a greater problem was not so much just Superman, but just how we staged action. The shows in the past basically dealt with one single character, and you followed that character through the action. Well, now you have seven. We tended to chop up the action in ways that didn't weren't very dynamic. The mm -hmm. problem was, though, we also had to, in between fights, you have to go back and see what someone else is doing, or you lose sure. him in the right, story. Right. We finally figured it out, but it, yeah. it took a while to get there. You all right? PG. It seemed like maybe you guys were, were having a little bit more fun. We did now kind of open the floodgates a little bit with Twilight. I was pretty charged up after we had done after I'd done my rewrite on Twilight. I kind of went, wow, okay, we can actually do the show that we kind of see in our head, that James and I kind of saw in our head. Right. We kind of realized, yeah, this is kind of, this is it. And so we can kind of go this way, and we can we can push the show in, in different directions. And we're very kind of passive-aggressive with our fans. Whenever we know <laughs> they want something, we don't give it to them. So... <laughs> So, season one, we didn't give them the big super villain uh, brawl uh, that they were expecting. So, Secret Society is our version of that. The plot gave us an excuse to have them fight, but it also gave our characters an excuse to talk about how they really feel about each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a mind control element to it, but really, the things that they're saying about their relationships and they how really they feel it. about each other, they all mean it. And we got to see them in ways that we couldn't see them otherwise. Mm -hmm. You don't care about me. What are you talking about? I'd give my life for you. So in terms of like the story and the characters actually having something at stake. Right. We just wanted to make things more personal for everybody. This thing's got to pay off sooner or later. Man, I love this town. Dwayne, was it your idea to, to send him to Vegas? I, I don't remember if it was my idea to send him to Vegas. I know the initial thought when we were uh, plotting it, we were all sitting around plotting it, was we wanted to do something with a reality show. We were kind of trying to figure out how to do, you know, the Joker and something like in that. In real time. We it, wanted to do the episode in real time as well. And that's what cracked it for us. The fun for me was the Joker has trouble with, you know, just Batman let alone, you know, Superman and Green Lantern and all these guys. But the fun of it was he came up with a plot that just ran them ragged. The suspense is killing me! Of course, it's going to be the explosions that kill them. Any final thoughts or, or anything uh, that you take away when you look back at season two? I'm pretty proud of it. I, I think it was, uh, it was definitely a turning point for us. Um, we were so kind of not used to, to failure because all the other shows we'd kind of like, you know, kind of come out of the, you know, come out of the gate, you know, scoring touchdowns and um, this one was a real rough, rough first season and uh, so it was, it was gratifying to be able to turn it around and then feel good about the show ourselves. Well with first season we, we saw what we didn't want to do which made it easier to figure out what we did want to do but in some ways it was like turning around an ocean liner to get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of hard work. Because we had that yardstick of the earlier shows it was just twice as hard to up the ante. <laughs> Well, it's an interesting thing to look back at, at the at the progression of this show. Uh, you really can see the steps toward the direction that you ultimately wound up with. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's really interesting to be able to go back and look at these things season to season like that. Always have to be the hero, don't you? Right back at you. It's always good to get to come here and sit down and talk with the guys and, and just find out about what they were thinking while they were making the show and to hear about the stories, where they got the ideas for the stories and all that kind of stuff. But another cool thing is to get to actually look at some of the artwork. Some of the backgrounds in particular are really cool and you don't really get to see them on the show because there's all the action and stuff going on in front, but they're really beautiful. Let's go check out some of the art right now. Your so-called Justice League is in violation of our martial law. They 
they are to be considered an enemy and dealt with on sight. What makes a background work, and especially what kind of style do you do, you do for this kind of show? Batman and the Superman shows both had really, really stylized backgrounds. And we thought that for Justice League, being a little bit more fantasy-oriented show, we should ground it in a little bit more of a, of a felt reality. Mm -hmm. We would try a little bit more experimental or bizarre color schemes, anything to kind of you know, make the, the backgrounds pop a little bit more. And this show winds up being even more sci-fi than even Superman in its later you know, episodes. It became a trick after a while trying to come up with different looks for different alien worlds because we went to lots of different alien worlds and um, alien environments. So, and, and each one of those had its own feel, and we didn't want them all to look like the same generic, you know, alien world. I mean, for instance, hereafter it takes place many, many thousands of years in the future where the, our sun has gone red. The red sun is tinting the, the moon pink, and then the sky, you know, the, the, the landscape gets kind of purplish. This is from uh, Twilight. The big mandate about the inside of uh, Brainiac's head is we wanted to have just immense scale. So we said, well, it'd be really cool if while we're panning through here, we saw one of Brainiac's spaceships parked there. So that kind of gives you an idea of how big this place actually is. This is a sequence inside the Brainiac head ship from uh, Twilight. And the idea was we were supposed to pass by all these panels that showed different worlds that Brainiac had visited and destroyed. Well, we didn't want to design like a zillion different planets. So we basically took old backgrounds from Superman the Animated Series and, and even Batman Beyond. You know, this is the world. It's from the Despero show. It's uh, Despero's uh, home world. His world is supposed to represent like a, almost like a Middle Eastern kind of world. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely had like a little bit of an Arabic feel to, you know, some of the, some of the cityscapes. And this is the Terror Beyond, and that's supposed to be a quasi-mystical other dimension. It's not supposed to be like a physical plane, but of course it does have to have some kind of physicality because the characters do interact in it. This is from Starcross. This background, I think initially it didn't have all these cast shadows all over it. That was something we added actually while we were painting it. And... I think I said, you know, that, that spotlight is blasting into the room. Why don't you carry those, those design elements into the, uh, the, the cast shadows into the design as well so that it's a much more angular, busy, and uh, threatening environment. It's all about storytelling with us. Thanks so much for your time today. I appreciate it. I'm Jason Hillhouse with Bruce Tim. Thanks for watching. Well, I hope you guys liked uh, listening to the... Uh special feature audio that I ripped out of the DVDs. Um, again, everybody, and I will say this until we finish this podcast with uh, episode 25, everyone, even if you've already bought the individual season sets, everyone needs to go out and buy this, this complete series. Because, uh, hello, wait, because, uh, hello, tin, it's a tin. The so, tin is very nice. Yes, the tin is very nice, and I hope I just didn't dent it with my fingernail there. That would scrape the paint. No, <laughs> it's uh, not mint. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> it's not mint. Um, I am actually so very glad that we are done with seasons one and two, because now I can actually put that DVD case back in the tin, and I can just focus on seasons three through five. Um. Somebody said when I, I posted pictures when, when this was first announced they 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 posted pictures of the uh, box art on on TV shows on DVD and somebody I posted them on the Earth Two .net forums and again I have to give a great shout out to Mike and James of World's Finest Podcast um, because they're just awesome uh, but somebody asked me on on the uh, second disc uh, they they show on the front they show Red Tornado Doctor Fate and Aquaman and then on the back they show Green Arrow Adam Jean, Jean and, and John, or John and John, whatever. Uh, and somebody asked me, why is why is Red Tornado on a Justice League box? I was like, well, because he's in Unlimited. Um, but just overall... Why is er, Dr. Fate? Well, he's why is Unlimited Adam? too. Yeah, well, they're all in Unlimited, that's the thing. Um, I find it very strange that they, for the uh, second uh, disc set booklet, it's green and purple. Wow. There's a Devastator if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh, so punny. Huh? Oh, so punny. Yes, I, exactly. I, okay, what I find really interesting is when you're looking at the Justice League Unlimited booklet inside, mm -hmm. it's got Hawkgirl in her season one, season two outfit. In the in the in the second set? 
Yep, if you in the the two page spread. Hmm. Upper left corner. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, maybe they didn't. Um, and and in the back page. Well, see the thing. In, <laughs> in the, does she go back into her outfit? And I just don't know about it. No, she doesn't. But this was probably this art that they have in here. This was probably um, promotional art for the original two seasons. Because on most of this, it's only well outside of outside of the two. Well, no. Well, yeah, I, outside of the two-page spread showing some of the other heroes, the original seven are shown everywhere. Um, so, I'm not really sure. Let me look at the actual art that's on the disc here. Flash, green, where's Hot Girl? Where the hell is she? Ooh, they put Joker on this, too. Yes, they did. I did not notice that at first. Ouch. Uh, I don't see Hot Girl. Like Batman. She's by Batman. Where the fuck is Batman going? Left, uh, you are looking at the inside cover, so it's left. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's probably because this was all promotion art for the ori- for the I don't know. But hell, she's in her um in her regular uniform on the special features disc too. So I don't know. Maybe it was because they just figured, okay, well, she has to have some sort of uniform look. Like, like she has to be in some sort of super suit or something. Well, not super suit, but you get what I'm saying. Outfit. Yeah. That's recognizable. Well, th- yeah, th- yeah, that's recognizable because the majority of Unlimited, when she does come back, she just wears clothes. I mean, she just wears like a t-shirt and jeans and and those boots that she wears. Oh my god. Of course, there was that there was that one episode in in uh, season five when she was in a hot ass dress. Holy crap, that dress was awesome. Oh, girl, I would so fuck you. Anyway. Wow. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good thing we have that explicit tag, huh? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, overall, um, very, very awesome. Uh, I actually can't believe we're already... Into Unlimited. I mean, it, it seems like we just started this show yesterday, and it's well, on by so That's fast. The listeners don't know. <laughs> what? That's what, but we did. The listeners just don't know. Yeah, no, we didn't just start this show yesterday. So <laughs> it's been going on for a couple months. Yeah, it's been going on for a couple months now. Six months. We started it. Um, yeah, February. February. Well, we. We recorded the the original episode zero, which technically wouldn't count. But episode zero, we re- we did record in January. But the actual kickoff of actual review shows of episodes was February second, two thousand ten. Oh. Which I'm thinking, uh, and this is very it's kind of up topic, but giving the listeners background information. Originally, I told you that the schedule would allow us to go up to New Year's Eve of twenty ten. I'm thinking of delaying episode 25 until February 2nd, 2011, so it's actually one year Year? that we've done the show. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Works for me. All right, so let's get to the outro, shall we? Thank you for joining us here on the Secret Origins Podcast. There's some ways to get in contact with us or leave feedback for the show. Visit the website, geekcastradio.com. Join the forums, predaconempire.com slash nexus. Leave the show's feedback in iTunes, please do this. And if you, I want to remind everybody, I'm saying this in, in every of the outros now, if you are a person who is listening to us from another country and not in the United States, if you write us an iTunes review, take a screen cap and email it to me, tfg1mike at gmail.com, and we will read your review on air. Uh, not that we have any reviews for this show, unfortunately, but um, follow us on Twitter. The show name there is Secret Origins. Mine is TFG and Mike. What is your Twitter, sir? Caminiti style. C A M I N I T I S T Y L E. Let Become- me know if you guys are actually listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, become a fan on Facebook. Search Geekcast Radio Network. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Secret Origins Podcast and wish you'll join us next time when we will be reviewing the first five episodes of Justice League Season 3, which has now become Justice League Unlimited. Unlimited. Those being Initiation, 
for the man who has everything, hawk and dove, fearful symmetry, not cemetery, symmetry, and kids stuff. And, uh, yeah, lupus is not going to like for the man who has everything, I can tell you right now. Uh, yeah, you're not. Uh, for the main reason that the villain of that episode is Mongol. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> but it's... I've got to like it on the, the basis of um, Green Lantern lore. Green Lantern lore? It has nothing to do with Green Lantern. It's a Superman episode. True, but uh, isn't there the Black Mercy plant? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's important as it was um, Mongol, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> For now, I am TFG on Mike with... <laughs> Lupus Convoy. Thank you for listening. Until next time. What the hell are you laughing at? I almost did it again. Oh, you almost said Kevin Eddie style? Yes. <laughs>